Hello, it's Linda here from Papercraft with Crafty and today I've got a tutorial for you on how to put together one of these gorgeous little pillow box gift boxes. Um, I've made this one using a new product which has just come out by Stamping Up and that is now featuring in the new Autumn Winter Catalogue Handmade for the Season um, from Stamping Up. Um, the die that I'm going to be using is this one. I'll just show you, pop that in there. This is the Square Pillow Box Thinlet Dies. Okay, so this comes packaged like this, and um, one of these nice, um, handy little plastic um, storage cases that you can stash away quite nicely, keeping everything together. Um, these are the dies, this is the complete package. So this is the um, die that I'm using today to make the box. Um, and it also comes with these additional little dies here. Okay, so aimed at the Christmas season, we've got a snowflake here. We've got some tiny little Christmas trees. Got some, hmm, what are they? I suppose they could be balloons, so you could use those for other things. Got some pretty little um, leaves here holly leaves I would imagine and then we've got one of these candy canes so you've got quite a lot of little bits and pieces um, along with the actual die itself um, for the pillow box so as I said this is the little box we're going to be making um, uh, I made this one up on um, white cardstock um, but today I'm going to be making one up on something which I've newly discovered and which I really love and this is um, Tempting Turquoise cardstock by Stamping Up. Um, I've not really paid much attention to it before but I ordered some in um, and it came in this week and I absolutely love it and I think it's going to look beautiful um, with silver embossing. So I'm going to demonstrate my little box using turquoise and silver and I do hope that you enjoy this tutorial. Okay, so um, you're going to need two pieces of cardstock for this particular little box. Now I'm using one piece here measures five by eight and a quarter inches um, and then you're going to need another piece for the back of the box um, and this measures five by five and seven eighths of an inch. Okay, so I'm going to start off by stamping and embossing the larger piece of cardstock. So what you're going to need for that is an embossing buddy. You're going to need some Versamark um, stamp pad and then you're going to need a really nice background stamp and um, for my project I'm using my current favourite it comes from this set which is called Awesomely Artistic and I'm using this um, stamp here which creates beautiful backgrounds okay so I'm going to be using that um, you can use whatever you've, whatever you've got really, um, just anything that creates a pretty, pretty background. So, put that to one side. I've already got my stamp here on, a, on, a, on an acrylic block. So I'm going to now load up my stamp. And before I stamp, I'm just going to go over the whole of the cardstock, sweeping across with my embossing buddy, just to remove any greasy marks which may be on the cardstock from my fingers and that ensures that the the embossing powder that I'm going to be use, using is going to stick to the stamped pattern and hopefully not to any finger marks. Okay so like I said load up your stamp and then I'm just randomly going to stamp my image across this piece of cardstock Okay, I'll pop that to one side now and I have got somewhere some silver embossing powder so I'm going to take my embossing powder now and I'm just going to sprinkle it over my stamped images
okay and you can see I've got just a little bit there um, which I'm just going to flick away normally I would have a pe little paint fine um, fine tipped um, uh, paintbrush handy with a fine nib and I find if I if I get any bits left on there which I'm not happy with what I tend to do is just sweep them off with a little fine nibbed um, paintbrush so that's just a little tip for you so any bits that you don't want to see on there you can just finely sort of sweep them away so I'm just going to get my embossing powder back in the back in its little tub and then I'm going to set about heat embossing this with my with my heat gun. Okay, so you have to use a heat gun for these. Um, you can't use a hairdryer, so you do need to invest in in um, a proper you know embossing tool or heat tool. Okay, so I'm going to turn this on now. I'm going to let it run just for a little while. And it sort of heats up and then I'm just going to sweep it over the um, stamped images. Okay. And you'll see now the slowly turn lovely shiny silver. Quite magical, isn't it? How the um, how the image suddenly just comes to life in the in the card. I love embossing or heat embossing. Um, nearly there. So there we go. I think that looks really, really, really pretty. Um, so now I've done that, I'm ready to um, take my die and run this through the big shot. So I'm just going to go away and set up for that and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I have here now my Big Shot um, and I'm going to be using it with my magnetic platform um, and what you need to do is make a little sandwich so there's my little base plate and here's the die and the cardstock so you want to place your die up here up to the edge of your cardstock like that lay it nice and flat on that platform. Um, I'm just going to turn it around actually because I put it on the wrong way which is very very silly. Right so I'm going to pop the other um, plate on top like that and then I'm just going to feed this through my big shot. So just going to run it through like that. Okay, so that cuts out one template for you and then just going to bring back in the other piece of cardstock which measured five by five and seven eighths, going to place that down, I'm going to put my die on there like this and I'm going to run it back this way. Okay, so that's the other, that's the back. So dispense with that now. And I'm going to bring back in my cut templates. Okay, um, now before we go um, get on with sticking these together, um, I'm going to introduce another new product which comes in the autumn winter catalogue, which I've found is really handy now for making these boxes. Okay, and that is this triple punch here, um, which is a new one. Um, and it's brilliant. Um, it cuts little slots like this, which um, 
hopefully you can see here on this particular um, little gift box and I just think these are handy because um, sometimes depending on how much you put in these pillow boxes the sides can pop out um, and I just think that um, having these little slots here and perhaps feeding some ribbon through just helps to keep the box really nicely um, together um, so I'm using it on this particular one um, like I said it's a triple punch really so let me just demonstrate to you I need a little piece of card so I'm just going to go and grab a piece so I won't be a second Okay, so I've got this piece of card here, so I'm just going to demonstrate to you exactly what this punch is capable of. So to get the little slots like I've used on the little box that I just demonstrated there to you, you just pop it in and punch and you'll get one of these. Um, if you want a pretty um, scalloped uh, corner to your card projects, put the card in like this, it kind of goes in on like a diagonal. Just lay it down and punch. And then you've got this beautiful little um, scalloped corner and then there's another corner decorative corner as well and that's this one so you've got like a double little curve so that really is a very handy little punch so it's called the Curvy Corner Trio Punch. It's in the new Autumn Winter catalogue and it's on page 18 and it's £18, but I think that's real value for money. Um, it's just a really, really handy um, punch to have in your kit. So, move those out of the way. I'm going to punch one of those little slots now on each side of my pillow box die and I'm going to be doing on the decorated side because that's the side that's going to be from the main closure um, it's the bit that you see really let me show you there okay so that's the bit you're going to see so that's the bit that I'm going to be punching so all you need to do is take your project whoops got a bit stuck everywhere here find the punch that you want so I'm after this one here so I'm going to put it in like that so there's my little half circle so find that you can view it there you go you might just be able to see it going through there so that's in there like that I'm just going to flip this over now and punch so that's that and then want to do one on the other side so again Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> Feed it through the right one, woman. Right. There's my circle. My half circle. You have to take a little time just to make sure you've got it right. I'm just going to flip it around like that and punch. Okay, so we've got two little slots each side now to work with. So pop that to one side. Um, before I put my box together, I go around and I actually like to... Um, just gently curve these um, edges on, on my cardstock okay so these are the bits that fold in so you just need to apply some gentle pressure along there and you'll feel the cardstock beginning to give And then I didn't have my bone folder to hand and I've already gone ahead and done this one but you'll need a, a bone folder just to because you've got these pre-scored lines so if you just fold them in on themselves like that pretending I've got a bone folder you just need to rub down those sides okay and those are the sides on which you're going to be putting some double-sided tape so taking the double-sided tape just run it up along each of the edges so I'm going to snip that there and snip off this little bit here which we don't need and then just apply it to the other side or the other piece I should say not the other side what am I like Just 
cutting off those bits now and so you're ready to actually put the box together and then the fun bit comes when you can start actually oops, start decorating it so it's going to sit that along try and get it nicely lined up along the edge take a little bit of time okay so that's that side done and i'm just going to remove the backing strip here and bring this side over like that And you can see I've just gone over, there's a smidgen of double sided tape there, which I don't want. So get rid of that. And that's the box formed. Okay, so that's the box then. But like I said, now it's like just decorating it, but I'll just show you now. So there it is. Okay. Um, and like I said, I, the fun bit starts for me now because I just love decorating these and blinging them up. So, what I've done is I'm using this little punch here, which I use loads of times um, from the Itty Bitty Punch Pack. And I'm also using my lovely Pansy Punch as well. Um, I have here, where is it? A vintage faceted button so I'm going to be using that um, and this is lovely this again is new in our autumn winter catalog and this is silver cording trim so you will find that on page 24 of the new catalog and you can get it in gold and it comes in silver and it's four pound fifty for 22.9 meters okay so I'm going to be using some of that and I'm going to bring back in what was left of the cardstock that um, we ran through um, for this piece earlier and the reason I stamped all the way across was because I'm going to be using these now just to finish off um, the box and decorate it so all I'm going to do is take my pansy punch, punch out that flower. I'm going to take my little, um, oops, itty bitty flower punch here and punch out three flowers. And that's going to, those are going to go on my box. Um, and I'm just going to bling those up with some rhinestones so pop one on there and pop one on here and one on here and Lenny really did you have to interrupt you cheeky monkey I'm just gonna have to let my dog out Okay, so I've let my dog out. In fact, I'll let them both out. They'll be asking to come back in again in a minute. So, um, like I said, I've gone ahead, done those, added some pretty rhinestones. And then with this flower here, I decided it would be rather nice to use one of these vintage faceted buttons just to add a little bit of texture and interest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my 16th of an inch, um, 16th of an inch handheld punch here. And I'm just going to punch two little um, holes round about in the centre, fairly close together, like that. Okay, and then I'm going to take my cording trim and I'm going to feed some through the back here and just cut some off now. You don't need very much to do this little tiny piece. I'm going to feed another piece through here, like that. And then I'm going to take my button. And I'm 
going to try and get it through this hole. That's one. I'm doing this without my glasses, so um, mm, I'm kind of at a bit of a disadvantage at the moment. But I'm just about there with that, yeah. So I'm just pulling that through, and I just think it adds a nice little decorative piece of interest to um, to my box. Makes it look just a little bit extra special. So I'm literally just going to tie a little knot in the middle of that. And then just snip it with my snips. Okay, pop those to one side. And then using my cording trim again, I'm just going to go through the little slot that I punched out, through the front, round the back. Close them up now. And I'm going to come, like I said, round the back, bring this bit out the front, and then I'm going to go back with this one. So I'm going to cut this off about there. That's going to come in through this slot, like that. Close up the sides. And like I said, I just think, I think it's a good idea to have these slots on the side of the um, box. Depending on how much you do put in these um, as gifts, sometimes the sides do pop open. So let me just bring my, I'm going to tie a bow. Let me think, where am I going to tie my bow? What did I do with that one? Yeah, I'm going to bring my bow towards the centre like that. And just... Actually, I'm just going to go around the back of that one. Making a hash of this, I know, sorry. <laughs> but hopefully you'll see what it is I'm trying to do. So I'm just going to tie a little bow here towards the centre of the box with my cording trim. I really think this stuff is so, so pretty. Um, Make the bow a tiny, teensy, teensy bit smaller, like that. And I'm going to leave these on, I'm not going to cut that because I just think they look so pretty. And then I'm going to take my pretty um, flower that I've decorated um, and I'm just going to pop on the back a few pieces of dimensionals. So I'm just going to snip off these bits that these bits that kind of get left on the side don't like to waste anything so I'm just going to pop one there like that and I'm going to put one on the opposite side here like that and I'm just going to pop my flower down on the cardstock so I'm going to lay each of these dimensionals on either side now of that ribbon or that, that, that cording trim Okay, so that means you can unwrap, you can untie this and pull it off, but the the, um, the little flower here is going to remain in place. That's not going to be going anywhere. Okay, and then I'm just going to take these sweet little um, flowers that I punched out earlier. Just going to fold up the petals to give them some dimension. And then... What have I done with my, whoops, oh dear, huh. what have I done with my blue dots, here they are, I'm going to just pop the three of these over here in this panel, and I just really like the way that they, um, they just give the box some texture, I just think they look ever so pretty, it doesn't look like any old box does it? I just think it makes um, 
whatever you're putting in there kind of extra special really so that is one of my new projects um, using the new square pillow box die um, I do hope that you have enjoyed the tutorial um, and if you don't have one of these lovely pillow box dies then hop over and have a look at my um, paper craft with crafty um, blog www.papercraftwithcrafty.co.uk um, you can visit my online shop there I'm going to post this um, tutorial to my blog along with details of all of the products that I've used. Um, I do hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and just as an aside, um, I have a lovely crafting friend called Lee Denton over at the Crafty Spark. So she is at the Crafty Spark, www.craftyspark.co.uk. And she has got a wonderful YouTube tutorial on how to make an expanded version of this um, pillow box gift box. So her, you can make them, well, according to Lee, you can make them in a variety of sizes. So you're not just restricted to this little one here. You can, you can make them, oh, I'm not too sure. I'm using 12 by 12 cardstock. I'm sure she'll be able to um, demonstrate on that video. I'm sure she has just how big you can get these boxes if you if you want to make them bigger. So anyway, I'm waffling, I know, um, but I just wanted to give her a plug because that is a brilliant video. Thank you for watching today and I will be back with another project for you. Bye bye.